And uh, to give you a brief introduction of myself, so uh, my name is Erin. You can call me Erin, and I'm primarily a mindfulness coach, right? So I've been working with uh, Aventus for, I think, um, two years now, and uh, I conduct a, like the one-day mindfulness workshop over at Aventus Learning Group. Yeah. So as you can see from my profile, I'm uh, certified to teach a few programs. One of them is the MBSR program. So in case you don't know about MBSR, it stands for Mindfulness Based Stress Reduction. So mindfulness and stress um, actually have a lot in relation. When we talk about when we learn mindfulness, we also explore stress a lot, right? And stress can be any kind of stress, and it's so relatable to all of us, right? All of us are stressed in some way, especially in this uh, COVID-19 situation, okay? So in these situations, all the more we need mindfulness, and these are some of the, the themes that we explore in terms of stress, difficulties, okay? So MBSR is an eight-week program, and it's usually meant for adults. To, for mindfulness training, it's a more structured way of training. If you have uh, younger children at home, youths at home, teenagers, um, they can do this program called the Dot B Mindfulness Program. So this is um, uh, meant for youths for about from about 10, 11 to 17 years old. Years old. And if, if you have younger children, then they can take something called the Pause B program. So this, uh, showing you this is just to let you know that there are actually different ways for us to learn mindfulness. It's just that we, we teach you in different ways uh, depending on which age group you belong to, right? But whatever background you come from, whatever experience you have or don't have, whatever age that you're at, you can practice mindfulness and you can benefit from mindfulness, right? Okay, let's move on. All right, um, I hope for this uh, session, even though it's quite short, I hope for this to be as interactive as possible. So I see that everyone is quite responsive on chat and I really like that. Um, so uh, I would like to start with this little Q&A thing, right? So we are now all in circuit breaker mode. Uh, we are staying home a lot. So I'm curious to know um, what challenges are you facing with this circuit breaker thing, right, in terms of uh, staying at home. So I have given a number of options here, and I'd like for us to take some time to just uh, contribute in the chat, right? So whatever that applies to you, just write the number. Yes. Awesome. I already see people populating that. So let's see what's the most common stresses that we feel. If there are others, uh, number eight, then maybe you can type it out, explain to, to me. Uh, what, what is your something else? Okay, interesting. I see a lot of five and sixes, feeling unmotivated, feeling burnt out. Okay, a few ones and twos, bored at home, confined. Okay, great, great. Is there anything else that I might have missed out on? Any challenges that are not listed here? Okay, I see a few fours as well. Mm -hmm. Taking care of family. Right, okay. Eight, COVID, yes. Working with family members together, win-win, okay. Thank you, Michelle. Home-based learning, yes, yes, absolutely. Home-based learning is a huge source of stress, right? Um, especially for, I think, parents, right? Parents are really getting a lot of stress right now. Ellen says, chill. So your challenge is you're too chill? I, I don't understand. Chill. Home-based work, okay, from Justina. All right. Feeling confined, okay. Relaxed, ah. So Ellen is feeling relaxed, okay. Okay, busy with work, WW says, no time for learning like others may miss out on opportunities in future. Mm, yes. Yeah, some of us are not able to be with our closed ones, with our loved ones. Right, getting family together, compartmentalizing. Yeah, so would you like to explain a little bit more about uh, compartmentalizing? Does this mean that um, you know, work and home are so fluid nowadays, right? We are essentially working from home, so they're kind of enmeshed together in some way. Is that what you mean? You find it hard to compartmentalize everything? Okay, feel free to give your comments as well. Getting family, yes, enmeshed, okay. Keep cool and relaxed. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for your contribution. So I get a good idea of uh, how everyone is feeling right now. And I'm guessing there must be 
a good or a strong reason or substantial reason why you decided to attend this webinar in the first place. You may be curious about what mindfulness is. You may have heard a lot about mindfulness, like why is everyone talking about mindfulness, right? And especially when we really need to um, uh, keep our cool and really need to grit our way through this circuit breaker thing, right? Uh, feel uncomfortable because keep extending the lockdown. Yeah, cannot live in a normal life. Yes. So in a way, our life has changed a lot. Right? It's, it's no longer the same as before. And some of us may be wondering, you know, uh, when things will go back to normal or whether things will ever go back to normal again, right? Or things will just keep changing moving forward. Okay? All right. Okay. So, second question. I'm not sure if we are familiar with these two words, right? A lot of times we are often in one of these modes, okay? We are either, either in a doing mode or a being mode, okay? A doing mode or a being mode. So without me revealing what it is, right? Let's uh, just look at the pictures and maybe you can, and can do a little guessing. Are you more in a doing mode now with the circuit breaker or are you more in a being mode? If you're in a doing mode, just type D or doing. If you're more in a being mode, you can just type D. Okay, don't be afraid to be wrong, right? Just let me know how you feel, which mode do you feel you're in? Okay. All right. What's Q? <laughs> Someone said Q. Okay. Both. Some B, some B. All right. Okay. Mm. All right. Okay. So I see a lot of people saying both, which has truth in it. Yes, definitely. Sometimes B. Okay. Sometimes D. All right. So I see a good split between both of them. Yes. All right. So what does um, doing mode mean and what does being mode mean? I'm going to explain a little bit from here and uh, we're going to we're going to sort of reflect on what this has to do with mindfulness, right? So, um, do we find ourselves in the doing mode nowadays? And I know that we live a very busy lifestyle. Everything is very hectic nowadays. So often we are into this sort of like a clockwork mode, right? Every day, just, we're just uh, trying to get, the, get through the day with so many things to, to check off our list. So if you find that you're in a doing mode very often, let's look at this list over here. Do these look familiar to you, right? Um, do you find yourself multitasking a lot, right? Do you find yourself doing more than one thing at a time, which is, you know, very common. Uh, some of you, I'm guessing, as you're listening to this webinar, you may be taking care of other things at the same time, right? You may be looking at your phone, maybe you're checking your email, maybe you're screaming at your kids to go, go take a nap or something, right? So it's almost impossible for us to uh, not multitask. Right, So it becomes a norm for us now to just do many things at a time. And we want to just get things done. Right? We, we always want to um, achieve this, achieve that, and that's very common for us. We're always asking, what's next after I'm doing this? Or before I even finish doing something, before I even complete doing something, I'm asking myself, what's next? What's the next thing I should do? What's the next thing I should complete? Okay? Now, you'll find that the rest of the list, a lot of these happen in the mind as well, right? Do you find yourself also with this um, COVID-19 situation, circuit breaker, do you find yourself asking, what if, right? You're often in this what if mode. What if things don't go back to normal, right? What if I lose my job? What if things don't go well, right? What if this uh, circuit breaker gets extended again, okay? So we keep projecting ourselves into the future, even though it's not here yet. All right, and we also go into this mode of uh, just, just, just having to make sure that things must go our way, right? Things should be this way, things shouldn't be this way, right? We go into the should or shouldn't mode. And sometimes we tend to project these into other people, the people around us as well. You should do this, you shouldn't do that. So this is also considered a doing mode, right? And we often go into what we call an evaluative or speculative kind of mode. So you're trying to evaluate everything that comes your way. Uh, we tend to compare a lot. We tend to have a lot of judgments about certain things. Everything that comes our way, we have a judgment towards it. This is good for me. This is bad for me. This is right. This is wrong. I have to do this. I don't have to do this. Okay? And we are always constantly in a problem-solving mode. Right? Now, uh, 
just looking at this list of doing mode here, it may seem like I'm, I'm painting a very bad picture about the doing mode, right? Like it's bad, it's bad for us. And in a way it's true, a lot of us can relate to this because, because we get very stressed because of the doing mode, we get very tired, right? But this is also what keeps us going. So I'd like to say here that there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with being in a doing mode at all. Nothing wrong, okay? Um, it is just a question of how helpful is this doing mode for you at any time, at any moment, right? It's normal to problem solve, but can problem, solve, can problem solving get a bit troublesome for you um, when you're overdoing it, right? Or when you're trying to problem solve something in a very emotional mode, in a very reactive mode, right? There's nothing wrong with multitasking. There's nothing wrong with doing things off your checklist. But if you're in this mode all the time, 24-7, even as you're lying in bed, you're checking things off your mind, you're wondering what's next for tomorrow, such that you lose sleep, you can't sleep. So how helpful is this, is this doing mode for you? All right? So just for us to reflect a little bit, okay? So now, let's look at the being mode. What is the being mode like, okay? Let's look at this list here. It's a very simple list, really, really simple list, right? So let's look at the first one, awareness of the here and now. So how often are we in the here and now? And what does here and now mean, right? So I can't really see all of you. Uh, most of you would have your video closed, but you can be aware of your immediate surroundings now. So my question for you is, from the moment you joined this webinar on Zoom up until now, have you noticed you're here now? Have you noticed um, the chair that you're sitting on? Have you noticed how many times you've crossed your legs? Right? Have you noticed how many times you've folded your arms? How many times your mind has wandered off to think about your family members or your children? Right? Are you aware of what's happening for you there and then? Okay? Maybe not all the moments. Maybe not all the moments, right? But if you're just aware of what's happening for you right now, then you have that awareness. So we all have this uh, capacity to be aware of the here and now, right? And says, I realize the number of times I sighed. Ah, okay, right. So I'm, uh, am I assuming that this sigh is sort of like a, right, kind of like a relief, a heave or sigh of relief, or you're just feeling stressed and you want to sigh? Yep, that's a very good realization. So sometimes we, we may not know that our body needs a certain kind of a release or we, we may not know that we need to have certain kind of, kinds of behaviors in order to get through the day, right? Um, in the being mode, we are also more accepting, right? What does accepting mean? So whatever that happens, so this, this is a contrast with the doing mode. With the doing mode, we tend to want to problem solve. When things don't go my way, I, I tend to brew a lot of it in my head. And I think, you know, things shouldn't be this way. Things should go that way. Should be this, should be that, right? But then accepting means that whatever that is here for us at any moment, there is a certain level of acceptance to it. Like, okay, this is my reality now, right? So let's take COVID-19 as a situation. We all don't want COVID-19 to happen. We don't want the circuit breaker to happen, but it is the reality now. So if you get to the doing mode too much of it, we may be... Um, doing too much of a, of a evaluating of this experience and we can get so caught up with it, right? And there's a sense of resistance to it. I have to do something about it. I'm so bored. I'm so stressed. Uh, I can't handle this anymore. Okay? All right. Um, yes. So accepting, right? Being able to, being able to uh, accept whatever reality is here for us right now. This is also called the accepting mode, right? And also allowing. So allowing is another step from accepting. Not only are you accepting, but you're allowing. So let's say we are feeling all these emotions in us right now. So instead of fighting all these emotions, right, we are sort of allowing these emotions to come and go without actually being too bothered by them. Right? And when we're in the being mode, we are sort of into this um, nothing to do, nowhere to go, right? um, which is essentially what some of us are facing right now. Right? There's nothing we can do, there's nowhere we can go except to stay home. So can we adopt a more being mode when we are at home? Okay? So doing versus being. Yes, 
uh, taking one day at a time. Absolutely, absolutely, taking one day at a time. A lot of times we want to project in the future or some of us um, are actively counting down, right? I don't know if some of us are keeping count on the number of days till 1st of June. Does anyone have a number? How many, how many days do we have left? I know a little more than a month, right? More than 30. Okay, yes. Yeah, so some of us are counting down one day at a time or one week at a time. Uh, nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that. Um, it keeps us motivated, right? But sometimes we do need to take it one day at a time, right? Without projecting too far into the future, okay? So every day, how much of the being mode are we in? And how much of the doing mode are we in, okay? So now when I present these two like that, uh, doing mode and being mode, I'm not saying that um, you know, one is good and one is bad. I'm not saying that being, being mode is the, the way to go, all right? But we need to reflect on the quality of our lives nowadays, especially in this situation. Are we too much in the being mode, right? Can we bring in, a, uh, sorry, in the doing mode, can we bring in more of the being mode just to have a little bit more balance, okay? Now, we cannot be in the being mode all the time. Why? Because most of us still have to work, right? Most of, us, most of us still have to work. So we will um, actually need to find a balance. When is it necessary for me to be in the being mode? And when is it necessary for me, for me to be in the doing mode? Okay? Okay. So this is, uh, I like to present a challenge for all of us now. A challenge for all of us. Okay? Um, and I'd like you to just um, not move into this yet until I've given you the instructions. But I'd like for this to be as experiential as possible. And then later on, when you come back, uh, then you can let me know how the experience was for you. Okay? So I'd like to invite you in a few moments. Let's all take a break from the screen. I'm sure we've been staring at the screen for a, lot, for, for a long time. So uh, I'd like for you to take a walk around the house. Take two minutes. Don't come back until two minutes is up. Okay? But don't disappear either. Please make sure you come back. Um, and just take a walk. Just take a walk into every room of the house, around the perimeters of the house for two minutes. And as you walk, I'd like you to slow down your pace. Okay? I'd like you to slow down your pace. Okay? Um, can we do that? If you're okay to do that, uh, can you type it okay for me just to get a, an indication of everyone's participation? Of course, I can't force you to do that, but I'll really like for you to try this out. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so this is all there is to this practice, this experiment, okay? Just take a walk around the house. If you finish walking before maybe two minutes is up, just get a gauge of how long two minutes is, all right? Uh, you can come back and wait at the screen again, all right? Until I, I come back and then I'll discuss with everyone, okay? So from now... Let's start our two minutes. Take a walk around the house. Thank you. Okay, so that was about two minutes. If you're not back yet, I hope you can hear me. Um, and just to give me an indication, if you're back at the screen, can you just, just type back in the chat so that I get a good sense of how many people are back? Awesome. All right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I hope nobody has gone away. All right. Thank you for joining, joining me again in this webinar. All right. So I'm very curious as to how this two-minute walk around the house was for you. Okay. How was it for you? So you may want to just uh, share your thoughts in the chat right? Uh, was it a happy walk? Was it a stressful walk? Was it a busy walk? All right? Okay. Oliti says, relaxing, not rushing, happy. Ellen is happy. Okay. A good break, calm, mm -hmm. slow-minded walk. Looking out the window, home sweet home, relax and cool. Great. Normal. Saw things which I have displayed, normal like every day, good stretch. Worry missing out the two minutes, okay? Short chat with my wife, saw the bed. What happened when you saw the bed? All my families, no thing, not thinking of anything, no feeling, leisurely walk. Wow, 
Okay, great. It sounds like uh, we have a quite a mindful bunch here, relaxing bunch, or is it because it's a Saturday? Maybe it's a Saturday. Maybe uh, most of us are not working. Well, I'm working, but you're not working. So maybe it's a little bit more relaxing for you. Right? Managed to get a drink. Would like to sleep when I saw the bed. Yeah. Okay. Got a drink for yourself. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, so you might have had different experiences, right? So just from a, a quick survey just now, most of us, we found that, you know, um, it was quite relaxing for us, okay? So we, we kind of did this on a Saturday, on a weekend. What if I were to ask you to do this on a weekday, on a typical weekday at this time? Do you think there would be a difference, right? What if um, I told you to do this not for two minutes, but to take a walk for 10 minutes? What about, what if I asked you to take a walk for 20 minutes, 30 minutes? Would you still have the same experience, do you think? Would it still be a leisurely walk? Would you still feel relaxed? Right? So um, I'm going to show you two scenarios that you could have if you were to practice this for a longer period of time. Right? Different feeling. Uh, we think what kind of different feeling might you have? Would you like to share a little bit? If you were to walk on a weekday, right? On a normal work day. Or if you were to walk for a longer time. Have to rush, mm -hmm. yeah. Can't focus on work. Yes, thinking of work, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. Lots of things to do, lots of things to do. Can't concentrate. Okay, good. So it's a good thing that Aventis is doing this webinar on a Saturday, right? That was a good choice because all of us are a little bit more relaxed, I think. We'll put a do not disturb mode to work, yep. Okay, how to walk around the house for 30 minutes? This is a very good question. And this is essentially what I ask uh, my students to do. Literally, we walk around the house during practice for 30 minutes. If you take my workshop, you'll understand why we have to do that. Okay, thank you. Work on a working day for a longer time can give rest to a moment. Ah, yep, that's right. Okay, so uh, this might happen for you as well, right? Uh, there are two modes or two kinds of minds that we could go into as well. Um, one of them being mindless, right? So just now when you were walking, right, um, did you find that, did you notice much of your physical surroundings, right? Some of you, you may have noticed your house, what, uh, what, what stuff do you have over there? Because there's nothing to do except to look at your surroundings, right? Some of us, we want to take it as a relaxing time and we just felt, oh, okay, I need to space out. That's fine. That's fine too, right? But did some of you also notice some thoughts coming in? Was your mind full of thoughts? Was it full of thoughts? Maybe you caught sight of the sink full of dishes and you're like, oops, I haven't done the dishes yet. Or mm, my child hasn't done the dishes when he promised me, right? Yeah, what to cook later? What should my family have for dinner? How should I plan dinner, right? It's always looking ahead. Uh, you catch your, your spouse, your husband, or your child, you know, like glued to his phone. You're like, ah, he's always on his phone. Yeah? Okay? So just a simple walk like that, right? There's no need to do anything. But at the same time, we can notice a lot of things that's happening in the mind. Our mind is literally never getting a rest. Even if your body felt relaxed, your mind is just wired to run, run, run all the time or almost all the time. Okay, and I would just like to explain for the sake of this, um, because it's a, a mindfulness webinar, I just want to let everyone know that both of these are not mindfulness. These are not, um, these are not technically uh, traits of mindfulness, and this is not what we teach, okay? So including spacing out, some of us, we feel oh, mindfulness is like emptying the mind. There's, there's no need for anything in the mind and I'm just chill and I'm just relaxed. Well, this is essentially impossible. It's quite impossible for the mind to have nothing, right? If you find that you're spacing out, this is actually called um, uh, a mindless state of mind because we are essentially not very aware of what is going on around us and inside us, okay? And in a moment, I'll tell you why this is important. Okay, so one definition of mindfulness that you need to know, and it's a very simple uh, definition, but this is one of the hardest to achieve. It's the hardest to achieve. Mindfulness is knowing what you're doing while you're doing it. So how many of you 
just now during that two minutes of walking, while you were walking, how many of you knew that you were walking? How do you know that you're walking? Did you know how you were walking? Or you were, were you too busy looking out for all the stuff around you, looking for things to do, getting yourself a drink, looking out for your family members? All right? Let me give you some more examples. Okay, you were counting your steps, fully aware, Ellen. Yep, okay. Uh, if you look at the top left corner of the picture, brushing your teeth, let's recall this morning. I assume everyone brushed our teeth today, right? I assume. Huh? So when you were brushing your teeth, were you aware that you were brushing your teeth? Or you just kind of know, but your mind is somewhere else. Your mind is somewhere else, right? Um, maybe you're brushing, 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 and you're thinking, what do I have to achieve today? What do I need to do? Where my kids are, right? Okay. Um, how about when you were having your breakfast or when you're having your lunch? Were you only paying attention to your food? Were you only with your food and present, aware of your food? Or were you eating, eating and doing something at the same time? Or eating, eating, at watching video, watching Netflix, watching K-drama at the same time? Or thinking, thinking, thinking nonstop? All right? Even household chores. When we are doing household chores nowadays, uh, everyone split their work, right? Because we can't get help and we are at home all the time. So as you're doing chores, what are you doing? Are you, do you know that you're doing chores as you're doing it? All right? Or you just get a sense, okay, I'm doing it, but I'm, I'm also bored. Or oh, I'm also tired. I want to do something else, right? Yes, you're right, Grace. These are our day-to-day -day routine. The mind just cannot stop thinking. Absolutely. Now, let's look at the picture on the top right corner. What about when you're talking to your family members? Do you feel that sometimes maybe you're on the receiving end, maybe you are the person doing it, but you feel, com you feel compelled to check your phone or just mindlessly scroll through your phone, even though you're supposed to be having a conversation with your family members, right? When you're talking to your child or to your spouse, maybe you're saying something important to them, but they are, you know, looking at their phone at the same time, yeah? We try not to, but it becomes a compulsive habit, right? There's, there was a study that showed that every one of us, we have an, a compulsion to check our phones, I think at least 120 times a day just pick up and with, with no reason, the phone didn't ring or anything. We just feel this compulsion to want to pick up our phone and check, okay? So with these daily routines, you're right, Grace, it is a daily routine. Do we know what we're doing as we're doing it? Or are we just on what we call an autopilot, right? We just go through the motions without actually being aware that we're doing all these things. A very simple thing like um, washing your hands, right? It's very important for us to wash our hands right now. Washing our hands used to be something that is very autopilot. We just anyhow wash. We just know that we have to wash. Or we don't wash at all, right? But now we have to sing two happy birthday songs to finish washing our hands. So we have to be more aware now. As you're washing your hands, do you know that you're washing your hands? Do you know that you're washing your hands properly so that every single surface is covered? Okay? Right? These are your daily routines. Yes. Okay? Um, and I wanted to show you this quote. I'm not sure if you watched this movie before or if you've heard of this before. Um, this was a 1964 film called Zorba the Greek. Okay, and the character, the main character, called Alexis Zorba. He's a very carefree man. And uh, this is a quote from the movie. And he says, "Am I not a man? And is not a man stupid? I'm a man, so I married, wife, children, house." everything, the full catastrophe, right? So full catastrophe has come to mean uh, everything that is coming together for us, okay? So for him, obviously, it's wife, children, house, everything, all these responsibilities, okay? So I want you to take a minute now to just type in the chat what is included in your full catastrophe that you have to handle at this moment, okay? It could be your family, it could be house, it could be your job, work, everything, anything that is lumped into what we call a full catastrophe for you, right? You may feel that this full catastrophe is something that you have to manage, but it can feel a little bit overwhelming for you, okay? So I invite you to just type in, right? Whether you are a man or woman, whether you're married or single or not married, um, what is included in your full catastrophe? Uh-huh, yep, parents. 
cooking for dinner, what to cook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially now every meal is at home, right? Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, marketing, schedules, parenting, jobs, self-development, health, webinars. Yeah, some of us are getting Zoom burnout. I was suffering from a bit of Zoom burnout uh, just weeks ago when all of these just started. Yes, household chores, finances, health, work, family. Absolutely. Yes. Irritating colleagues. Yeah, love life. We know a lot of uh, couples uh, or people or partners who don't have the pri privilege of being together at this point in time, right? Yep, exercising, watching series, uh huh. Okay, home based learning. Yep, your child's school work. So we are living a very, very overwhelming lifestyle nowadays. Really, really overwhelming, right? Married with a grown up son. Yes, absolutely. So with this full catastrophe, um, of course, a lot of people would choose to run away. Right, and maybe just live a, a, a very carefree life. But the truth, the reality is we cannot do that now. We honestly cannot do that now. We have to be responsible for the full catastrophe in our lives. Right? So when this happens to us, um, it can um, bring a lot of emotions, a lot of um, story, what, we, what I call narratives in the mind when stress comes to us. Right? So our mind is very powerful. It can literally bring us everywhere. It can bring us everywhere, right? So for example, you have, you're facing all these full catastrophe in, your, catastrophe in your life right now. And then when you lie on the bed to sleep at night, you can't fall asleep. And you just think of how overwhelming life is. And you, you just keep thinking, thinking, thinking. The more you think, the more frustrated you are. The more frustrated you are, the more you can't sleep. The more you can't sleep, the more you, you think, right? So all these emotions that come to us, all these negative thought patterns, they can keep replaying in the mind nonstop. Right, so a lot of times our mind is so powerful because of these stresses, it can bring us literally everywhere. It can bring us back into the past, and you're like, oh, how I wish I haven't gotten married. Right, how I wish I, you know, I didn't change my job at this point. How I wish, how I wish you wish to change the past. Right, uh, you regret the past, there's some guilt going on. And then some of us can project far into the future, right? You're worried about your job stability. You're worried about what's going to happen in the future. How long more is this going to go on? So your mind can take you everywhere. And usually in times of stress, our mind can take us to places where we get even more stressed, right? Can get us even more stressed. So how do we manage this using mindfulness? How do we manage this? The first thing that we want to practice with mindfulness is, just now, do you remember the previous um, definition? Mindfulness is knowing what you're doing as you're doing it, right? But now, mindfulness is also about knowing what is happening as it is happening and what is happening inside you. When you're getting stressed, do you know that you're getting stressed? Or you only know until it is too late, until you've spiraled down into depression, until you, you're feeling anxious and you're having a panic attack. Um, I know a lot of us, we, we are spending a lot of time with our family members now. So there's a lot of tension when we're all cooped up in a, in a, in a home, in, in, in confined within four walls, right? So as this tension all pans up, maybe we, we will not uh, be able to know that it's happening until we start shouting at each other, right? I know some parents who tell me that, um, they find themselves boiling with anger a lot, and then they tend to want to, sh uh, you know, they, they tend to shout more at their kids or their family members, for example. And then only after they shout, and then they realize that they shouldn't have shouted. Right? So what's going on here? When we are boiling with anger, we don't know what's happening, and then once it manifests in a kind of behavior that is not very helpful for us, right? This is when only only then do we realize what is happening, and it's often a little bit too late. Okay, so what does mindfulness teach us here? It teaches us here to just sort of keep a very gentle watch over ourselves, right? What is happening to me in terms of my thought patterns, in terms of my emotions, in terms of the state of my mind, the state of my body? If I'm able to catch all these in time, I will be able to manage myself. I'll be able to regulate my emotions. I'll be able to manage my thinking patterns, my perceptions better. I'll be able to take better care of my health when I'm aware of my state of health. Okay? So this is what mindfulness is all about. Essentially, we are learning to observe ourselves. Right? Before we are mindful of our behaviors, we should be mindful of what triggers our behaviors. So what triggers our behaviors? Thoughts, 
emotions, all right? So this is something that I'd like to practice with you today, just as an introduction. Of course, it is not possible to know everything and to master this within a webinar like that. It, it, this is actually a lifelong practice, but a little goes a long way with mindfulness. So just with an introduction like this, if you're able to understand the, the gist of it and start practicing, I hope that you'll be, you'll be able to see the benefits of it, okay? All right, so uh, this is what uh, mindfulness has helped me with personally. And I always tell myself, you can always come back home to the present, right? The mind can take you anywhere. They can take you to the best places, of course. They can also take you to the worst places. And sometimes we don't know how to come back, right? So mindfulness teaches us that we can always come home to the present as and when we need to. So this is what I hope to practice with you all today, right? Okay, so let's practice, let's practice. So a lot of times in mindfulness, um, we want to use our body to bring ourselves back to the present. Now, why the body, right? Recall what I said just now, the mind can bring us anywhere, right? Have you seen, if you like to watch dramas, you know, have you seen this scenario before? Something happened to the main actor and he or she can't believe it. Like, oh, I can't believe this is happening to me. And they ask someone to slap them or to pinch them just to make sure this is reality. Right? Have you seen scenarios like that? Okay. So why do they want people to pinch them or slap them? It is because that sensation, the pain that they feel in the body is telling them that I am here. This is real. Okay. So practicing this way, paying attention to our body can help us come back to the present and stay in the present so that we are more in the being mode all the time rather than getting lost in the doing mode, okay? So what I'd like for us to do now is to do a little bit of a body awareness practice, okay? And uh, what I'll need you to do is I'm going to stop the share for now, all right? Okay, so now when you're ready, let's do the other side. Shifting the body weight to the other side. Finding your balance, very slowly, we're going to lift up the left leg in front of us. Lifting it to a height that feels comfortable for you. And now, noticing the body in this balance. So as you are observing yourself, holding this posture, maybe at the same time, you also notice certain thoughts coming in, right? Are they uh, a, a judgmental, evaluative kind of thoughts, negative thought patterns, like, oh, I have a poor sense of balance. I can't do this. Everyone must be doing this better than me. Okay? So if there are thoughts coming in, just notice that thoughts are here. That's all. Okay, so when you're ready, let's put this back down and let's come back to center. All right. Now, once again, okay, so we're going to keep layering these um, movements. Let's shift to the left. Finding your balance, we're going to lift the right leg up in front of us. Okay? So once again, finding the body in balance. So can, this can be sort of like a, kind of like a playful thing, like you're really noticing your body for the first time. Okay, so now here comes the challenge. Without lowering your right leg in any way, let's swing our right leg gently to the right, swinging it to the right without lowering it, okay? And notice how your upper body is now leaning to the left just to balance itself, just to keep itself in balance, okay? What does the body feel like at this moment? Okay. So really paying attention to the body. And now when you're ready, we're going to swing this right leg over to the back, swinging it to the back, and notice how the upper body is now leaning slightly forward to keep itself in balance. So it's kind of like you're a child again and you're getting in touch with your body again. Okay. okay. So holding here for a few more moments, noticing what this experience is like without the need to judge this experience as good or bad. Okay. This is just how your body is at this moment. All right. I'm bringing this leg down. Let's come back to center. Okay, so we're going to do the other side. Let's shift our body weight to the right. Okay, very gently. We're going to lift the left leg up. Okay, now remember to keep yourself safe. 
we are not trying to, I'm, I'm not going to grade you, okay? I'm not going to say, oh, you did this well, you kept yourself in balance, so I give you an A grade or a B minus or a C plus, okay? That's not happening today. We are simply paying attention to the reality of our body, okay? So now without dropping the leg, we're going to swing the left leg over to the left. Notice how the body transitions into this posture. And now notice where is your center of gravity? Where is the upper body leaning towards? Becoming really curious. Okay, very good. So now again, without dropping the left leg, let's swing it gently to the back. Notice how the upper body is now leaning slightly forward. Okay. Noticing where the center of gravity is. Noticing the body weight resting on the right leg and beyond in front of you. And then very slowly, we're going to bring our leg back down. Let's come back to center. All right. Okay. So we're going to do a few more movements. But let's come back to our stable standing posture. Relaxing the shoulders. So make sure your shoulders are not tensed up like that. Okay. Relaxing the shoulders. Feeling your feet on the floor. Grounded to the floor. Good. Now, when you're ready, we're going to zoom in on just the right arm, okay? So just pay attention to the right arm over here, hanging down the side of the body, right? So now when you're ready, let's try to keep the movements as slow as you can. We're going to raise our right arm up by the side, as if you're drawing a large semicircle, keeping the movements as slow as you can. And as you're lifting, maybe noticing the weight of the arm. Lifting it past the shoulder level and reaching the right arm up towards the ceiling. Okay, so let's hold this posture for a few moments. Um, it's okay if you have to bend your elbow a little bit, that's fine, okay? So holding this extended posture, noticing the body in this extended posture. So now when you're ready, we're going to stretch our fingers further up as if you're almost about to touch the ceiling and noticing the stretch down the right side of the body. What does this stretch feel like? So it's like you're paying attention to your body this way for the very first time. Good. Now, if this feels comfortable for you, I'd like to encourage you to lift up your left heel. Lift up your left heel and stretching even further. Keep the breath flowing naturally. Okay, now, lowering the heel back down, relaxing the stretch in the right arm, and now, moving very slowly, allowing the right arm to come back down, resting with whatever sensations that are present here. Noticing movement, flowing sensations, heat, numbness, tingling sensations, and all the way back down to the side of the body. Okay. If you want to, you can very lightly shake out the right hand, just in case that there are some sensations that are still lingering. And coming back to center. Okay, so now we're going to do the left side, right? When you're ready, keeping the movement slow and safe, lifting the left arm up, paying attention to the weight of the arm, the movement in every moment, just being present with the body right now. Lifting past the shoulder level, and reaching up towards the ceiling. Okay, so staying here for a few moments in this extended posture, paying attention not just to the arm, but also the, the armpit, the shoulder, the chest, the shoulder blade. Okay, and then when you're ready, we're going to stretch the fingers further up as if you're almost about to touch the ceiling, noticing the stretch down the left side of the body. All right. If this feels safe for you, we're going to lift the right heel up, stretching even further. Don't forget to breathe. Okay. And now lowering your heel back down, relaxing this stretch, and gently allowing the arm to come down as slowly as you can. All right? Paying attention to what is here. Just resting and being with whatever sensations that are here. 
coming all the way back down to this side of the body. Okay, and just very lightly shaking out the hands. Okay, good. So now, last set of movements. We're going to try both our arms now, okay? So lifting both arms up by the side as if you're drawing two large semicircles. Lifting past the shoulder level and reaching all the way up to the ceiling. So feeling the body in this extended posture, right? Noticing the stretch on both sides of the body. So now only if this feels comfortable for you, I'd like you to lift up your heels and just bringing your body up on your tiptoes and just holding this balancing posture for a few moments, all right? Okay, just holding this for a few moments, noticing what the body is like in this extended posture. So you may notice your body reacting to this posture already. Maybe there's some shivering, trembling, micro movements. Maybe there's a sense of tiredness. What does tiredness feel like in the body? Where are the sensations of tiredness? Okay. All right. So now very gently, keeping it slow, we're going to lower the heels back down, noticing the contact of the heels with the floor. And then very gently, bringing the arms back down the sides of the body, one moment at a time, just resting with whatever sensations that are here in the body. Okay, and now gently shaking out the hands if needed. And I'd like to invite you to come back to the stable standing posture, standing up straight and tall, and allowing the eyes to gently close. Let's invite awareness to this body in this stillness. So whether the body is in movement or in stillness, we can just learn to be with the reality of the body. So what is present in the body right now? Noticing temperatures, heat, warmth, coolness. If you're perspiring, you may notice moisture on the body. Maybe there are tingling sensations, tightness, soreness. Noticing breath, the quality of the breath. And if we're really, really still, maybe we can even notice the heartbeat. There is nothing you need to do about the body at this point. One moment at a time, all you need to is to just be with the body and just rest with whatever that is here. Let's spend another few moments in this silence and stillness. And just noticing the body in this standing posture, breathing in and breathing out. Allowing the breath to be natural. Maybe you're noticing that the mind is starting to get busy again, starting to think about this, think about that. That's perfectly normal. If you find that the mind has wandered off to somewhere else, all you need to do is to bring your attention back 
to this body once again. So the mind can bring you everywhere, but the body always brings you back to the present. All right, so now when you're ready, I'd like to invite you to take a deep breath in and gently exhale and just allowing the eyes to completely open. Okay, so let's take a few moments now and let's transition back to our seats in front of the screen. All right, so just an indication that we're all okay and we're all back. Can you just type okay in the chat just for me to know you're here? Just give me an okay. Hmm. Awesome, wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen again. So um, how was practice for us, right? What did you notice during the practice? Now, uh, typically with any mindfulness training out there, it's really beneficial for us after each practice to just be able to um, inquire into what the experience was. This is how we learn about it. Of course, in a webinar like this, it's quite impossible for me to really pay attention to everyone and help you learn from your own experience. So I'm going to do a really generic one uh, just based on the conditions that we have now, okay? But just take, a, take a, a, a moment to reflect on how that was for you, okay? So um, these may have happened to you, yeah? Okay, so Kim Xiong, you have that right. You have relaxed and peace, okay? So some of us, uh, if these uh, keywords speak out to you, if they were part of your experience, it can be a mixture. Uh, feel free to just type them in it. Type them in the chat for me to know. Relax and peace. Be distracted after some time. Okay, most of us relax. Peace. Focus. Okay, focus is a good one. Yep. Peaceful. Mm -hmm. Relaxed. Okay. Oh, I haven't seen bored yet. Okay, no one was bored. Impatient. Not used to it. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Body stretched. Impatient after a while. Mm -hmm. Realize muscles are tight. Yes. Okay. Relax and peaceful. Good stretch. Thank you. Relax and chill. Mm. Relax. Okay. Great. Long time no do yoga. Okay. Distracted after a while. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, so maybe just a few words about your experience. Now, um, I'm just doing this very gen generically. And of course, in a, in a longer class, I'm able to just really go to the depth of it with, with you all. Um, if you're feeling distracted, normal, normal. I didn't expect you to be 100% uh, paying attention to your body, right? Because you're in an environment where it may not be very conducive, your family members all around you. So likely you would have been distracted by something, either something external or you're distracted by something internal. You're probably thinking, what time is it now? When is this going to end, right? So this is also when uh, some of your impatience may have come in if you're not used to moving like that. So you may have thought, you know, why do I have to move so slowly? Or I could make better use of my time, right? Why do I have to spend? What's the point of this? So you may notice impatience coming up in the body. You may have feel relaxed. A lot of you say you feel relaxed. Okay, that's good. I don't know if any one of you felt stressed felt stressed at all. Maybe not from a movement practice like this, right? But at the, at the end of it, when I got all of you to just be in stillness and just watch the breath and the body for a few moments, right? What if I told you to do that for, for half an hour? Just be in stillness and just watch your body and breath. Would you still feel relaxed or would you still feel, would you feel stressed? Okay, so no for some of us. Stress at the muscle, muscle level, body level. Okay, yep. All right. So 
all these things are normal experiences, right? And I especially want to talk a little bit about relax since most of us said that you're relaxed, okay? And the reason why is because I don't want you to also get the wrong um, understanding of mindfulness. A lot of us, we, when we practice mindfulness in this way, it is relaxing for us. You can see it's not, for, it's not relaxing for all of us, but it can be relaxing for a, good, a large majority of us, right? But the thing is, relaxation is not why we want to do mindfulness. It can be a very good sort of like an outcome or a byproduct to have, but it is not an objective of mindfulness, right? So just like what I said, um, if I were to get you to, um, you know, just continue walking, right? Walking and doing nothing, but just walking and walking, walking for half an hour or one hour straight, you may start to feel very, very stressed. So it's not actually meant for relaxation. A lot of us think that mindfulness is for stress reduction. So opposite of stress is relax. Hence, I do mindfulness to relax, okay? But this is the wrong understanding. Please know that we do not go into mindfulness to relax. It is also normal for you to not feel relaxed when doing mindfulness because that's not the point, okay? The point is to be able to train our attention to be in the present moment and to cultivate a sense of acceptance and awareness to everything that is happening outside of us and inside of us, all right? Okay. All right, I wanted to flash you, of course, there are, my, the thing, what's good about mindfulness is that it's very much backed by strong research. There are just so many research studies being done on mindfulness, and these are some of the um, outcomes uh, that I've listed here just for you to know how mindfulness could potentially help you, okay? So from things like uh, reducing depression and anxiety, we all know that depression and anxiety are becoming very common for us nowadays. Resilience is a very important thing. They're doing more and more studies on mindfulness and resilience. So if you are resilient, you will be able to bounce back from failure or from difficulties or from stress or from adversity more readily, okay? So you likely won't just, you know, spiral down into the bottomless pit of depression, for example, okay? Resilience, you'll be able to concentrate better because mindfulness is technically a, a kind of attention training. Um, there is greater mastery of emotion. So a lot of us, we find that we cannot control our emotion, right? We get upset and we don't know how to manage them. So mindfulness can help us be that, masters of our emotions. When it comes to um, relationship, mindfulness trains you to actively and deeply and mindfully listen. You will cultivate better listening skills to improve your relationships. There is also a correlation between mindfulness and empathy as well. Your ability to empathize with others, to support others, to be compassionate about other people, right? Uh, relationships, relationships improve. We're not just talking about family, spouses, uh, parents and children. We're also talking about like uh, co-workers relationships, okay? Uh, less self-destructive behaviors. Now, this one is very important. Uh, if you if you sort of go deeper into mindfulness training, you understand why mindfulness helps to stop some uh, addictive behaviors, like addiction to your phones, addiction to alcohol, addiction to certain kinds of foods or certain just certain kinds of behaviors. Right. So less self-destructive behaviors. And the last uh, bit that I want to show you is this. Uh, physically, mindfulness helps us about, it's not just about mind training, it also uh, uh, helps us to get better sleep, right, that's one. And second, it improves our immune system. And this is very important right now for us in this COVID-19 situation. So the more we practice mindfulness, the better our immune system becomes, the less likely we are falling sick. Okay, so uh, it tackles both the mind and the body as well. And we know for sure, mind and body are essentially one. They are the same, right? They work in tandem with one another. Okay. All right, so um, if you're keen on uh, diving deeper into this, uh, Aventis offers this, so I'll, I'll be teaching this. Uh, it's a one-day workshop, and now we're doing a live stream version of it, which is six hours. So six hours is very long. But um, people have found this, participants have found this to be very effective in getting a fuller understanding, a deeper understanding into why you need mindfulness. I'm going to touch on things on uh, attention. I'm going to touch a lot on stress. 
uh, you will understand how mindfulness can benefit you specifically, right? What mindfulness means to you. Uh, when you take my, my workshops or programs, I don't give you like, a, like definitions, like dictionary definitions or scholar definitions. I want you to reflect on what mindfulness means to you, specifically you and your life, right? Last one is the most important thing, how. The how is always the most important question in mindfulness, right? We can talk until the cows come home about what mindfulness is or why we need mindfulness. But if we don't know how to practice it effectively, then it's all just a waste of time. Because mindfulness is a skill. It is a skill. We have to develop it through practice. And only through practicing will you be able to benefit from it. All right, and I'd like you to I'd like to leave you with this question now. With your understanding of mindfulness, um, you may want to ask yourself. Right, you don't have to share this at all, but what could you do more mindfully this week? Okay, whether it's in terms of your day-to-day -day routines, your self-care habits, self-care routines, whether it's with work, right, or whether it's with your family, with interactions. What could you do a little bit more mindfully this weekend? Just pick one thing to do. Right, and then practice it and see how it goes. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit about, you see these pictures here? So these are the one-day workshops that we hold at um, Aventis. Their school is at Somerset, right? But of course, we're moving everything online, so you won't get a physical space like that anymore. But uh, we are modifying, of course, the content to suit a, a, a Zoom platform, right? To suit an online platform like this. So um, if you're keen on um, taking such trainings, then there is one coming up for the One Day Mindfulness Workshop. So this one will be on 21st of May. It's on a Thursday, right? So if you're interested, uh, they are offering you a discount. So uh, please go for it, <laughs> all right? If you want to, you can email Lina. Lina is the one on uh, the Aventis Learning account right now. And you can also scan the QR code, okay? Right? You can visit their website as well. Uh, Aventis has so many courses for you to choose from. So if you're interested in mindfulness, you can go for mindfulness. If you'd like to explore something else, you can also do that. Okay? All right, so I'm just going to uh, rest here for about 10 seconds in case you want to scan this. Okay? Thank you.